it's Bina with TCM Review. Today I have a question from Pete, and Pete is asking if I can explain the difference between interior and exterior wind. So let's start with the exterior wind. Exterior wind can manifest as wind cold and wind heat. That's the easy part, you guys know that. And so then what would the key symptoms be that you're looking for for exterior wind? Uh, fever and chills, right? Yeah, so fever and chills, and it may or may not be a floating or a superficial pulse. I like to say yes to the superficial pulse, but every once in a while you have a patient who is deficient and then their pulse doesn't show up floating. But the fever and chills is always indicative of an exterior wind invasion. Now, with exterior wind, there is another manifestation, and that is that wind can attack the skin. Like when we talk about erysipelas or urticaria, which is also known as hives, this is wind that attacks the skin. And you may or may not have chills and fever with that, but you definitely will have an acute skin rash. It could be red. It doesn't have to be. It is itchy, and that is the one main symptom for wind, is that when it attacks the skin, that it is very, very itchy. So that is another way exterior wind can manifest. Okay, so now let's talk about interior wind. Interior wind comes about because the channels and collaterals, they lack fluids, they lack blood, they lack yin. And when the channels are empty, as the classics say, then we have a place for wind to reside. And so the basic way to treat interior wind is to replenish fluids. There's one more thing that I'd like to mention about interior wind, and that is that with interior wind, we are really thinking of wind that affects the liver. Since the liver circulates the blood in Chinese medicine, and when the body's at rest, the blood returns to the liver, if there is fluid deficiency, then it's liver that can't circulate that blood. And so we see those issues um, present like Parkinson's or wind stroke or even um, epilepsy is another one. Any kind of shaking, tremors, ticks, these are all symptoms of interior wind. Now, interior wind can be divided into two types. We have our interior wind that's caused by fluid deficiency, and then we have our interior wind that's caused by heat. And we'll look at each of these. Um, let's start with our deficiency. So with deficiency, we have liver blood. When liver blood is deficient, it can lead directly to liver wind. And we can also see uh, liver blood deficiency causing liver yang rising, which can lead to wind. We also have our yin deficiencies that lead to wind, like liver yin deficiency. It causes yang to rise, leading to wind. Or we have liver and kidney. Remember, liver and kidney share the same root or the same source. And so those two can be out, leading to yang rising, leading to liver wind. And then the last category is heat that leads to wind. So how does heat lead to wind? Well, heat, you can think of it like a boiling pot. What's going to happen when you add heat to water? It's going to evaporate, right? And so heat in the body does the same thing. It, it uh, consumes the fluids. And in this case, we have like liver fire. Liver fire will lead to liver fluid deficiency, which will lead to wind. And or we have extreme heat that comes from the exterior and it destroys the fluids, destroys the blood, leading to wind. Now this last type, this is an exterior that comes into the interior. So even though it starts as exterior, it doesn't start as exterior wind. It starts as exterior heat that consumes fluids, leading to interior wind. And does this sound familiar to you guys? Does this sound at all like Wen Bing Lun pattern? That's what it is. So with Wen Bing, remember, it's heat disease that penetrates the body, damages the fluids. And so if you have extreme heat leading to wind, you're thinking shui level disease with the end result being fluid 
or blood is completely destroyed and then it engenders wind. If you have questions, you can leave them here or on Facebook or on Instagram, or you can email them in, or we have our Facebook groups. You can post in the Facebook group if you are already taking my classes. And if you aren't taking my classes and you love this presentation, I offer a lot more of this type of support in my classes. So you can check out the websites below, tcmreview.com for nationals and for the California boards and also tcmreview.ca for the pan-Canadian exams. Okay, I look forward to seeing you in my classes.